It was October 16th, 2019. My hands were jittery. My palms were sweaty. The drone of the test proctor had faded into a dull hum. I was about to take the PSAT. That's when they strike. When you're in your most distracted, vulnerable state. At the end of the painfully arduous pre-administration form, there was a simple question. Would you like to opt in to the student search service? It asked. The short explanation read, the Student Search Service connects students with colleges and scholarship organizations by sharing their information with participating organizations. Reading this, I thought, why the hell not? And bubbled yes. I had no idea that I had just made the biggest mistake of my life. I remember the first email. Dear Carson, you've already caught my attention as a candidate for success at Wichita State University. Nice work. Now I want to help you find the school that will maximize your academic and career potential. I invite you to request WSU's free guide. Three ways to get real world experience in college right now. I felt noticed, appreciated, special. I might have even read their guide. The only problem was I wasn't interested in Wichita State University. So I closed their email and went about my day. Then came the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Soon, I was getting 10 emails a day from every college in the nation, each saying I was a perfect fit for them. I thought, okay, this will die down in a few weeks. Are we Carson, did you receive your email? This Carson, email? Shut up! I continued to ignore them. Surely, if I don't respond, they'll realize I'm not interested and stop emailing me, right? They didn't stop. Even now, three years after I took the PSAT, Every day I get a constant barrage of emails reminding me to use their priority application, reminding me that my time is running out and my deadline is coming. Oh wait, but they're gonna extend the deadline for me. I finally decided that I've had enough. I'm declaring war. At the very bottom of each email, there's a small beacon of hope, an unsubscribe link. Clicking this takes me to another page where I can easily unsubscribe. Yes, please. Sorry, Abilene Christian University. It was never going to work between us. There's also sometimes a button here on Yahoo, but it says it just sends a request to the sender, which doesn't seem very reliable. I'd rather do it directly through the college's system, because then I will automatically be removed from their email list. I'm assuming that's how it works. I could go through all my emails and unsubscribe from each one manually. But that seems like a lot of work. So instead, I'm going to spend twice as long using Python to do it for me. Here's my plan. You might have seen this before. This is the HTML of the website I'm on, and it defines the structure and contents of the web page. You can view this by pressing Control shift i in pretty much any browser. There's even a tool here that allows you to jump to the HTML for any element. So for example, this paragraph shows up here. And I can even change the text. Congratulations, now you are hacker. Unfortunately, if I refresh, then the change goes away. If I go into my email, well, what do you know? This is also HTML. You heard that right. All the contents of the email are defined here. It's actually possible to write a program that reads this HTML data, commonly referred to as web scraping, and there's even a way to interact with the web page and mimic a real user. I'm going to use a library called Selenium. Pretty powerful stuff. The possibilities are endless. By now, you can probably see where I'm going with this. I'm going to create a bot that detects college emails, opens them, and unsubscribes from them automatically. Let's start with unsubscribing from just one college. First, I initialize a Firefox browser, then I am visiting a URL by calling .git. So if I put in https www.google.com and run this, we have a browser window opened to Google. And you can see this robot icon is in the corner. That shows that the browser is being controlled by our program. Yahoo.com. Here's the homepage. We want our inbox. So I'm going to paste the link to that in there. Now we have to sign in. <gasps> relax, relax. Remember when I said we can mimic a user and something about HPML? Inside the hood mole, this text box is conveniently labeled with the ID login dash username. So we can scan the hood mole and grab this text box, and then we can throw keys at it and... Voila! Clicking on buttons is just as easy. Once I put in my real email in here and use the same process for the password, we're in. <laughs> 
we're in. All the emails are contained in this unordered list. Let's click on the first one. Hi there, Bradley University. Say your last words. To click on the unsubscribe link, I'm going to use an XPath to find an element with the text unsubscribe. An XPath is kind of like a file path, but more powerful. It allows me to search for elements using all sorts of criteria. Now that we've gotten to this page, it's really just more of the same. These checkboxes have nice IDs, so I'll just click on both of those, and then finally click on the unsubscribe button. Okay, let's see if this works. So we're going to open up Yahoo. Now we're putting in our email and password. Clicking on the inbox icon. Now we've opened up the inbox, and we're going to open that seventh email. Immediately clicking unsubscribe. K.O. And then we close that tab. Very nice. What's next? Well, it's really just a matter of looping through all the emails, clicking on the college ones, and then going through this unsubscribe process. The tricky part is figuring out which emails are from a college. I noticed that almost all the colleges have a .edu email address, so I'll probably use that. But some colleges have a .org address. So I'm also going to check for words like university, admissions, and college in the sender name. But what about blah 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 Polytechnic Institute? I can't let them escape. So I'm going to check for the word apply and application in the subject and body of the email. No college shall slip from my <laughs> No college shall slip from my grasp. Except the ones on my whitelist. I'll go over that later. Luckily, I can access the sender's address and pretty much the entire body of the email without actually opening it, because it's here in the Hutmul. Here's the code for that. I'm just grabbing the sender name, sender address, and body text of the email from the Hutmul. Then I check if the sender address ends in edu, or if the keywords I mentioned are contained in the sender name or email body. If any of those are true, then we can go ahead and say that the email is a college email. If none of those conditions are satisfied, then we will return false. Now we can quickly test this by looping through all of my emails and clicking on the ones that we think are from a college. That seems to be working. Um, PayPal? So apparently somewhere in this email it says apply. We can significantly reduce issues like this by limiting our criteria to only addresses that are either .edu or .org. Okay, so I could just start unsubscribing from every college that I come across. But there are actually some that I care about. What I can do is make a whitelist that will contain the emails of all the colleges that I don't want to unsubscribe from. For example, I can put UT in this list. I'm only going to use the domain part because colleges normally use a lot of aliases under the same domain. Implementing this is just a matter of reading the lines from our whitelist and then checking if the sender address of the email we are currently looking at is inside of that list. While we're at it, I'm also going to add a blacklist. This will be for all of the colleges that we've already unsubscribed from. That will speed up the process and prevent issues with resubscribing. So now, if the email sender is either in the whitelist or the blacklist, we'll just ignore it. We can add onto the blacklist every time we unsubscribe from a college. Now that I've actually started unsubscribing, we're running into some issues. Most colleges conveniently use the same system, so the unsubscribe process is the same. But there are a few other page formats and link names that we need to take into account. There's a bit more than I had realized. We need to take a more generalized approach. Basically, I'm just going to try clicking on everything. All the things will be clicked. This code might look intimidating and complicated, but it's not that bad. For the link part, I'm just clicking any link that contains these keywords. Then, once we're on the actual unsubscribe page, I'm continuing my professional and elegant strategy and clicking every checkbox on the page. I'm assuming that will work out most of the time because they always have the boxes default to the opposite of what you want. For the button, I could click every button on the web page, but a lot of times that will send us to faraway places or cancel the operation or resubscribe or something. So I'm going to use a similar method to the link and just look for any button that has the text save, unsubscribe, etc. Instead of just keywords, I decided to make a file with a bunch of XPaths because some developers can't be bothered to use the button tag for their buttons. This works quite well. Some paths, like this type submit, cover a bunch of general cases. 
and I'm once again taking advantage of contains so the text doesn't have to be an exact match. All these commands use the click if exists function that I made, which just allows me to search for an element and click it without throwing an error if it doesn't exist. There's also a few annoyances relating to the email list. This line is storing a reference to an element in the HTML. If the page gets reloaded, then the HTML gets updated and we can't use this reference anymore. I've been opening each email by clicking on it and then clicking the back arrow to get back to the inbox. The problem with this is we lose the reference to the email list and I have to capture it again. That's why I'm updating the list every iteration. This is pretty inefficient and it can be easily fixed. I can just open each email in a new tab, thereby preventing the inbox page from refreshing. So I've done that. Fixing this, of course, leads to another issue. Now that I'm only reading from the HTML initially, we're running out of emails. Yahoo doesn't load all whatever thousand emails I've ever received all at once, obviously. Only about 50 at a time. If we scroll down far enough, the first emails will be unloaded and new emails will appear. We've got chunks going in, chunks going out, it's a mess. To get around this, I collect the emails in batches. By the time we've processed all the emails in the current batch, we'll have scrolled far enough down that there will be new emails loaded into the HTML, so I can just update the list to get the new batch. Unfortunately, this updated list will contain some emails that we've already checked. To make sure these will be ignored, I had to store a small buffer of the most recently visited emails. Then we can skip over any emails in that buffer. So in the final version of the code, I have two loops. The inner one scans every email in our email list, and then the outer one updates the list and gets the next batch when we run out. I also added a try accept around our unsubscribe code, so if we accidentally open a non-college email, or if they have a link that we didn't account for, the program will just skip that email and continue to run. Oh, and I made it delete the email right after it unsubscribes from it so I can quickly look through the trash and make sure it didn't unsubscribe from anything I care about. I think it's time. Let's execute order 66. Now the bot is going to look through my first 1000 emails and unsubscribe from any colleges it comes across. University of Minnesota. All right, we're on the unsubscribe page. Success. How about Florida Southern College? Mmm, this does not look like the right page. They fooled us! I guess let isn't a specific enough keyword. We at least have this page format down. Don't you dare. Ah, oh, we kind of unchecked the wrong thing there. Enjoy the carnage. See, so many colleges use the same system, so if we can just get those, that will be plenty. Here's one we haven't seen before. Get wrecked. Really? Eh, not quite the result I was looking for. There are now 80 colleges in the blacklist, so I'd call that a smashing success. I have two very important questions that I have yet to get an answer to. How many college emails have I received in total over the past three years? And which college has sent me the most emails? I'm going to tweak our program a bit so that it counts the emails and also deletes every college email that it comes across, because why not? I can just use this delete button so that we don't have to open up the email every time we can also take advantage of headless mode here. This is where the web scraping cool factor really reaches a new level. 
In headless mode, our program will execute in the background without actually showing the browser. I think the college email detection part works the best out of anything. Scanning through all the thousands of emails that were deleted, I didn't see a single one that wasn't from a college, which is surprising because I took such a simple approach. The results are in. Out of the 10,522 emails that I've received since January 2020, about 5,600 of them have been from colleges. That's an average of seven new college emails every day for two years straight. Out of 185 different colleges, the worst offender by a very narrow margin was Florida Southern College, which emailed me 124 times. I mean, I don't even live in Florida. Why would I want to go to Florida Southern College? Why do they think sending me 100 emails is going to convince me to apply? I don't care how much you pester me. I don't care about your priority application. And I don't care about your stupid quizzes and guides. No offense to my rattlesnake viewers, or actually anybody that goes to these colleges. Just maybe talk to your admissions board about more courteous marketing strategies. Anyway, I've unsubscribed from 80 colleges and my trash is filled with thousands of college emails. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I mean, how satisfying is this? If you think I destroyed these colleges, then destroy that subscribe button. And if you hate spam, then share this video to uh, spread awareness. And you should comment also about how much you hate spam and like the video out of anger.